Can you explain the difference between proof of work and proof of stake and why some of these blockchains are migrating from one to the other? Yeah, sure. So there are the three qualities to a blockchain. It needs to be immutable, i.e. you can't change it or can't change it in the past. You're making changes, new changes going forward. It needs to be transparent and it needs to be distributed. The distributed part is where things get really tricky because if everybody's going to have a copy of it, how do you decide what constitutes a true copy versus an untrue copy, right? Because if you've got a list and I've got a list, I can go change my list, but that doesn't mean that you agree that, that list is what should be changed. So how do we come to consensus on this? Bitcoin um, and Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever he was, came up with this idea of proof of work, uh, which is to say that the, the rules of the game are going to be that there's going to be a race to solve a math problem which is to create a hash of the previous last block in the chain with a certain number of zeros in the front. And that's sort of hard, right? Making a hash of something is easy. Making a hash that meets certain numerical criteria is really hard. And so everyone sort of starts, you know, doing lots and lots and lots and lots of math to figure out, okay, can I get that first? And then whoever does that, which is a problem that's hard to do, but easy to prove that you did it right, right? So everybody else can agree, yep, yep, that's the correct answer. And then uh, we're going to all agree that that next block is going to be based Based on that number because we don't know when otherwise we get another number that looks like it and then everyone starts the race on the next block after that so the idea behind proof of work is it's the math problem and that math problem means that since it's very unlikely that more than one person is going to get that first you have an agreed upon system of who's going to get the reward which block is going to be considered true i.e it has a certain hash to it and then you're stacking the next block on top of that block so people are incentivized to accept the answer in order to be able to get it on with the race and the uh, the rest of the network agrees that the longest chain, the chain with the most blocks, is the one we consider to be the most true. In general, this works pretty well. You know, this is somewhat subject to certain vulnerabilities, like the so-called 51% attack. But the idea is that it is a fairly secure and frankly proven out over almost a decade approach to validating a network and getting everyone to agree that even though you have your copy and I have my copy, that those two copies will be the same because of this, this rule of the game, this consensus created by that by the race to the magic math problem. Another great thing about proof of work is that anybody can participate. Anybody can be involved in the race. Anybody can come up with the correct answer because what you're validating isn't that you like this particular node. You're validating that you like this particular answer because whoever got the answer first, that's giving you your opportunity to go, yes, I'm kicking into the next mode to get my head started on the next, um, uh, and what the next block is going to be. So it's very distributed. It's very open. It has in its own way, very democratic. And on the downside, all this math, you're just running your computer, crunk, crunk, crunch. And, you know, just like your computer gets kind of hot, right? When it's doing a lot of work. Well, imagine all all these computers out there, they're doing lots more math than that. They get super, super hot and heat means energy. And that's why proof of work in general is extremely energy intensive. You're trading energy for math problems in order to eventually get to one that just sort of by random chance happens to have the right quality of both being a hash of the previous block as well as having the right number of zeros. So people don't like it mainly because of the energy expenditure and that the the very part, the very work part means everybody's wasting a lot of energy in order to be able to get that or at least that's the take on, it's wasting energy. And if you're finding this video useful, then go ahead and click that like button. Thank you. So then there's proof of stake. Proof of stake is an alternative form of network validation where it says you can become a validator of the network if you are willing to stake, i.e. secure a certain amount of asset, which is usually the uh, native currency of that particular chain. So in the case of say Ethereum, the theory is you would stake some numbers of thousands of ETH, which is millions of dollars of ETH or tens of thousands, tens of millions in order to say, I am going to be in the circuit of people who will say which block is correct and take the fees that go along with uh, validating uh, that particular block, as well as the newly minted, you know, little bit of Ethereum that's in there. So the idea is that you have more people participate in the proof of stake that is expensive to get into the proof of stake and that the people who are involved in the proof of stake don't want to mess up the network because they've staked all of this asset. That means that they basically are making a long bet on the long-term value of that asset, which is the native currency. So they don't want to do something that's going to hurt that native currency. And that alignment of incentives is what's going to cause the network to remain secure. So that's the theory behind it. The downside is that there's no real mathematical basis for saying that this is going to keep the whole thing secure. The idea is you're just trying to create incentives because you believe these people, because they're staking so much money, are going to what's in the best interest of the network. Because since they own so much of the currency, the best interest of the network is also their own best interest. This is 
may be probable, but not a guarantee. Usually there are fewer validators in a network when you have proof of stake than when you have proof of work, because proof of work is completely democratic, whereas proof of stake, you've got to be a multi multi-millionaire in order to be able to play. And the um, because you have fewer nodes in there, it is more vulnerable to attack. And some smaller blockchains have experienced this before. Uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, I think uh, the Ronin chain had that happen to them. When you have fewer uh, validators, that you're more exposed. But the, on the plus side, you know, because it's based on agreement, because everyone's staking, uh, you're not doing all of that math, right? Which means your computers aren't getting so hot, which means you're not spending so much energy. So the pitch is, this is like a couple orders of magnitude lower cost in terms of energy. The downside is what's actually going to be the security implications of it. As always, if you want to stay apprised of the latest around emerging tech, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks.